was born on July 1, 1938. She's originally from Houston, Texas, and went to the Houston public school system for her grammar and high school education. She received her bachelor's degree from Wellesley College in 1960 and received a PhD in history from Columbia University's Graduate School of Arts and Sciences in 1975. Ravitch has been an educational policy analyst and a research professor at New York University Steinhardt School of Culture, Education, and Human Development. She is the author of 11 books and has co-edited 14 books as well. Ravitch received six awards for the life and death of the great American school system alone. Along with the six awards for this book, Ravitch has been granted over 50 other awards or special recognitions. She has given many lectures across the nation and internationally as well. She is the founder and president of the Network for Public Education and is the number one historian of education. In the book, The Death and Life of the Great American School System, Diane Ravitch, the author of the book, writes about the issue of holding teachers accountable for how students perform on standardized testing. Ravitch argues that having a strong curriculum benefits the students more than having a stronger emphasis on testing. Diane also discusses in this book about how choice, like choosing to go to a private school instead of public, is not benefiting students and is draining money and productivity out of the public schools. Overall, Ravitch is arguing that the federal government needs to be less involved in schools and schools need a drastic change. I concluded that curriculum and instruction were far more important than choice and accountability. Testing, I realized with dismay, had become a central preoccupation in the schools and was not just a measure but an end in itself. The Senate uh, continue to believe in the principle of accountability. Uh, unfortunately, accountability has now become a synonym for punishment. And the attitude towards our schools is, uh, if kids aren't learning, somebody has to be punished. I don't think anyone at the time even expected that it was attainable. Uh, no state has even come close to 100% proficiency, even with their inflated scores. Uh, the states are... Very, uh, the, the, the uh, responses on charter schools, the success rate, is very varied depending on what, what kind of kids they get. They get some good marks because they tend to take children who speak English or who don't have the disabilities that others have, the challenges, educational challenges. So is char are charter schools the answer in some communities and not in others? Charter schools can sometimes be excellent and sometimes be terrible. Most of them are in the middle. On the whole, if you look at the national scores, which are the federal test, which just came out the other day, charter schools do not get better scores than regular public schools. So if we're trying to improve our education system, charters are nice, but they're a distraction. What we really need, and, and think about it, 3% of our kids are in charter. Testing is not a substitute for curriculum and instruction. Good education cannot be achieved by a strategy of testing children, shaming educators, and closing schools. Congress and state legislators should not tell teachers how to teach any more than they should tell surgeons how to perform operations. Overall, Ravage is able to prove her thesis. She is able to back up each of her points with various credible and reliable sources. Ravage supports her thesis through these sources and through her own viewpoints. She has changed over the years in what she believes is right, but she always stays true to what she believes in and does not let other people affect that. However, Diane Ravage does let her redemption get in the way at times, which is a distraction throughout the book. If this self-redemption can be ignored by the reader, this book can be an excellent tool for learning about the flaws of the American school system and possible ways of fixing these flaws.
Recommended readers would be anyone, including taxpayers, students, teachers, and parents. Everyone needs to be aware of how our current school system is failing our students. Above all, teachers can benefit the most from this book. Teachers are able to see firsthand about what is going on in terms of accountability and testing, and if this is working or not. Teachers can tell parents, principals, board members, and so on what is working or not, and how to fix it based on their experiences.